Hello and welcome. You are listening to the Feng Shui Serenity podcast. I am your host, Grace New. Each month, I tune into the key themes that might be showing up for the collective, using Chinese astrology, five elements, as well as Feng Shui. And here, we talk about all things sacred, divine guidance, soulful living, creative expression, and finding the magic within. Hello and welcome to this episode of Feng Shui Serenity. Most recently, I received a message from one of my Instagram followers asking me whether this has something to do with her home's feng shui, because she recently moved into a new home back in May this year. Few months down the track, she's noticed there are certain things in her life has changed significantly. So first of all, her money. Is becoming really tight. She was doing quite well before she moved into this home and had a certain level of savings, but since moving into this home, money just seems come and go, and there is so much expense that most recently she even got herself into some debts. She also noticed that her health has not been well. There are some old illnesses somehow being triggered since she moved into this home, and she is still trying to recover from this. So her question to me was, "Does this have something to do with her home's feng shui?" And as we all know, feng shui is an art and science about how we place ourselves in the best possible way, in accordance. To our external environment, so there is a few layers in terms of the external environment. And back in episode eight, I talked about the importance of how the external environment would influence your own home. So that's the outer layer. But for each of us, our home is also considered our little universe. So the energy within our home, of course, is going to play certain influence and to some extent a lot of influence and impact towards our life, such as money and finance, such as relationship, family harmony, your health and well-being. And this impact sometimes they are seen in physical form. But most of the time, they are unseen, and as we move into Feng Shui Age Nine, from twenty twenty four, the most significant influence is likely to be unseen, is likely to be energy related. So my advice is, if you do intuitively feeling something is not right. Don't put up with it and don't ignore it. There is always an energetic reason for certain things to happen, and we human, for better or for worse, have this genius for getting used to things, especially when the changes are incremental, and especially in our toxic societal culture. We are so likely to be multitasking, and we are so busy. We hardly notice anything subtle, or any signs, or any signals that is warning us, until tragedy or loss strike into our life. So, for example, if you hardly had a migraine in your whole life, and suddenly you getting it every month. Things are not normal. Don't believe it is normal. And if you are a really careful and cautious driver, never had an accident in your life, and suddenly 
you experienced two accidents in the last three months. Please do not believe this is normal. This is to be expected. I once had a client who had a two car being written off within a year, and that certainly is not normal. And if your business usually attracting your sole clients, but suddenly you notice there is a certain level of conflict, and the client just seems wrong, and the inquiry level is actually also dropping, don't allow these signs to go beneath your radar. There is something to do with the energetics that is not aligned, that is blocking your wealth and money flow. And this is where we not only use feng shui to bring you that wealth and abundance, career success, relationship harmony, but we also use feng shui as a tool to prevent any significant unexpected loss, tragedy, or physical illnesses. And we use feng shui as this tool to pick up. These subtle signals, these signs, well before it becomes serious or becomes really affecting your life quality. So, in this episode, I'm going to share four key aspects where you can place your awareness gently to pick up those subtle signals and self-assess whether the feng shui of your home is aligned. So, the number one aspect you can tune into. Is whether the relationship is harmonious around you, and this can include family relationship, romantic relationship, as well as business partnership and relationship. There is a Chinese saying that 和气生财 meaning the harmony produces wealth, which emphasizes the importance of the harmonious relationship around you. On all levels, so if you pick up, there is this sign, or for the last few months, the key themes seems to be increased conflict around you or in your life. For example, this can be you suddenly find the relationship with your parents becomes quite difficult, and you also had a fight with your sister. Or even walking on the street or going into a shop, you seems to be attracting those arguments or petty people around you. Or you maybe feel that there is this self confliction within you, and you feel quite restless and frustrated. Or everything you say seems to be attract criticism. You may also find yourself being caught up in some kind of complicated or entangled relationship, and ended up taking the blame, but not through the fault of your own. Or, and if you suddenly find the energy within your intimate relationship somehow shifted, and you start to have argument, and you have experienced more than one breakup in the same property. Then you need to reassess the feng shui of this home. The sha qi within the external environment, such as menacing object directly in front of the property or the layout of the property, can all bring relationship issues. The number two aspect is money and wealth. So, if you have moved into a new home or changed environment and noticed a significantly change in terms of your money status or financial outlook, then you need to be careful to see if there is any sha qi around your home or within the layout of your home. For example, missing corners, location of the front door. Location of the staircase and kitchen and toilet can all affecting the financial and money aspect in people's life. The third area to pay attention to is the health and well-being, as well as unexpected accident or major event in life. This is such an important area to do with our health and well-being. 
So I really recommend you to tune into any illnesses or symptoms you are experiencing repeatedly. So the key words here is the frequency and how often it happens. And of course, we all have certain ailments at times, but there is a difference between that you will have a headache once in a while versus you have a headache every week or you have an eye infection every month or you regularly experiencing a back pain, a neck pain. And I once had a client who told me that she had an UTI almost every month for the last six months. And she believed that was normal. So it is interesting that when there is an increased frequency of certain illnesses or ailments happen to us frequent enough that we start to accept that it's normal for us. And this has also happened to another client that her younger son, let's call him little Johnny, who always get injured at school or during sports events. His wrist or his ankles, his limbs, he's just accident prone, quote unquote. But I didn't believe that was simply just accident. In feng shui, the younger son is associated with the northeast sector. And this year is year of the tiger. So the northeast sector is really being activated. When there is a feng shui misalignment in there, the specific person within the family will take the most hit. When I assess the feng shui, there is certain misalignment within the northeast sector. Therefore, the little Johnny is taking the worst hit. So here is another key with regards to feng shui that we can really tune into who is the person or what is the member of the family is going to be mostly affected. So if you have noticed there is repeated accidents or repeated illnesses particularly happening to one member of the family, there might be a certain sector within your home that is not aligned from feng shui perspective. The fourth aspect where you can self-assess and tune into is whether you feel this resistance and blockages regardless it is this people, event, circumstance is happening in your career. So career is so important for us, right? We want things to be effortless. We want things to be happening for us and the career advancement is being effortless and direction is clear. So if you feel there always feels there is this unseen fog around it that is stopping you from progressing, no matter how hard you try, and it is always as if at the last minute, the most important, crucial time, things just drop. Things just, uh, unexpected things just happen that you didn't get that promotion or you didn't get that pay rise or whenever there is this opportunity of recognition or uh, competition that you always want to miss out, then it is time for you to really tune in and review what is misaligned within your home from feng shui perspective. And please don't believe this is simply bad luck. There can't be that many bad luck for one person to endure. So don't put up with it. Don't tolerate it. Find out why and fix it. Because you deserve that. For what you have done, you deserve to be recognized. To be given that title and to be get a proper remuneration 
from the monetary terms. If the career sector is missing, this is probably the most obvious reason that you will never get recognized, you will never get a promotion, or you're always missing out. There could be other feng shui reasons to cause this as well. Certain external configuration in terms of the road configuration can mean that your hard work can be robbed by other, meaning that other people just take a credit for what you do. And this could also be because of there is not enough bright hall effect in front of your home or your home is not drawing enough chi from the external environment. So this is this home is not being nourished, is not being supported from the external world, such as your work environment, your boss. There is certain internal design and layout within a home can also affect this as well. So here are the four key aspects I've just shared with you so that you know when things are showing up in your life. Sometimes they're just life, but most of the times there is an energetic reason for unexpected events happen in your life. And there is a way to adjust it. There is a way to align it. And I am about to reopen my favorite feng shui course called Feng Shui for Buyers and Renters, where I teach you all of this. Starting with what is the chi, how you choose the location, how would the road and location and topology would affect the chi within your home, internal layout within your home, and how you can correct and remedy this. And this time, I'm going to do this course very, very differently. I want to do this course live. I want to answer your life questions. I want to see specifically how I can help you in your specific situation. So I'm going to add in, in the live coaching sessions and I'm going to have the Q&A sessions where we have the hot seat coaching and you have the opportunity to censor your floor plans and your dilemma, your question. Any kind of scenarios, you can send it in. And this is particularly for people who have wanting to get me to do their feng shui assessment, either because of time, energy or money that you didn't get around to do it. And this is a beautiful time to join us. And this course, although it is called feng shui for buyers and renters, it is actually open for all people. Even you're not really looking to buy or rent. Even when you are living in your home, but experiencing certain misalignment, you can't put your finger on, but you just know there is certain energy doesn't feel right. Come and join us. You will learn so much. So if this is something that you really would like to explore, make sure you sign up on my newsletters and you'll be the first to know when this course with the mastermind coaching happen and more information will be sending out to my newsletter subscribers and of course feel free to join me on instagram where i am most active so i hope this episode really helps you to fully understand that what areas that you can tune into to even assess yourself what is the quality of feng shui within your home. Thank you and I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Feng Shui Serenity podcast. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe or leave us a review and I will see you next time.